Okay, in the previous section you saw how easy it was to actually assign a function to a programmable input by simply using the drop-down menu. We can go to programmable inputs and what we did is we assigned increment uh, input rear panel gain by 1 dB to button number 1 and decrement input rear panel gain by 1 dB to button number 2. We could easily go to button number 3 and assign something simple such as toggle mute inputs and you'll notice that you know the uh, number of the inputs 1 through 16 are exposed as well as the test inputs and if we were to choose toggle mute outputs we get all of the outputs and so on. If we wanted to for instance uh, recall a memory preset we would have access to all of the 24 presets and this is a very easy way to program the 1624. Now one thing you want to keep in mind is if you need to use very simple functionality uh, as we're doing here by all means use the drop down menu. You know it's the just a very simple way to control uh, inputs and outputs and mutes and so on and there's no need to do anything more complicated if this is all you need. However there are times when you will need to do other things simultaneously. For instance, you need to set the rear panel gain of a couple of particular inputs and you need to set the mutes and you need to turn on pink noise and you need to turn on an LED. Well, we needed to find another way to group all of these commands. And what I'd like to show you now is how these commands actually work and what's going on behind the scenes and then show you yet another way to use these commands without having to do any programming. And uh, if you need to, you can always use the macro language and I will explain how that works now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up Notepad and I'll show you quickly how the language works. As an example, if I wanted to change the input level of channel 5 to 10 dB, the absolute easiest way to do that would, would be to type something like this. Input gain of channel 5 is equal to 10. That's just plain English. And that would be absolutely simple. However, if you had to type this type of, of uh, sentence <laughs> for every command, after a while you'd become very tired of this, much like we have a friend named William and eventually we start to call him Bill. It's just uh, a lot easier. So what we want to do is we wanted to find a way to make the language intuitive so that you could remember uh, very easily how to construct the commands. So if we were to simplify this to something like this, IN for input, GN for gain, then in parentheses we put the channel number and set it equal to 10, that is much more concise. So now we have the input gain of channel 5 is equal to 10. We've actually set the value to 10. Now it would be very easy to guess what the input mute command might be. How about this? INMT 5 equals 1. Now I've just muted input number 5. And if I want to unmute it, I would simply change that to 0. Now, if we wanted to set the output gain, you guessed it, OUTGN, 5 equals 7. Now we have set the output gain of channel 5. So the language is very easy in this respect. If we wanted to set the cross point gain of a particular input to a particular output, XP, GN, uh, how about input number 3 to output number 6 
and we want to set that to zero, which effect, effectively turns the cross point on. It's the language is that easy. All all of the things that I'm doing right now are updates. I'm actually updating the box. So that's an update. Now, if I wanted to find out what the input gain to channel 5 is, I would type this. Notice the question mark. That means it's a query. Here we have an equal. That means it's an update. So whenever you see an equate, it's an update. Whenever you see a question mark, it is a query. Okay, so so far we have updates and we have queries. Well, we also have commands. And a command will look something like this. Run maybe five. That would run a macro. Notice there's no equate and there's no query. So we're simply issuing a command. Or if we wanted to recall a preset, we would do something like this. And that's called a command. So what we have are commands, queries, and updates. So if you remember this, Q-U-I-C-K, we can call the language quick, and all we have are queries, updates, and commands. Now if you go to our help file, this is what's really nice. We'll go to Aspen Reference, and in the reference we have the Aspen Control Protocol. I'm expand this. And in the control protocol, I will choose the 1624, and I have a listing of all the commands. So if I go to audio inputs, look how nicely this is organized. It shows you all of the commands that are audio input related. And if we select one, like input gain, what I was showing earlier, you'll notice that we not only do we get a definition of what the input gain does and its ranges, but also we get examples and it tells us what kind of command it is. We have a query and we have an update. It can never be a command. And now that we have the ability to increment um, one particular gain value by issuing an input gain command, you know, we can increment from 5 to 10 or or we can decrement it from uh, 10 down to 4, whatever we want to do. Let's say that we have something like this. We've now just incremented input gain channel 5 to 10. And let's say that I want to increment uh, input channel 6 to 10 and also 7 and 8 to 10. You can see where this is going. This might become a little tedious when we're doing that for 16 inputs or 32 inputs, as in our 32i. Uh, so there must be a better way, and there is. What we can do instead is we can type ingn and use what's called a wildcard or an asterisk. And now we can set all the values for the inputs. So how many inputs do we have? We have 16 inputs plus the four test signals. So let's say I wanted um, one input number one to be zero, two to be zero, three to be zero, four to be zero, and then I wanted five to be 10, 6 to be 10, 7 to be 10, 8 to be 10, and then let's say number 9, I don't know what the value is, but I don't want to affect it. I want it left untouched. Well, we can set that to 99. And so now we have 9 is 99, and 10 is 99, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. And then let's do that for our test tone generators. There's one, two, three, four. So we have 20 values in this array, and now in one single line, 
we are able to address all of the inputs plus the test tone generators. Now this starts to become significant because right now we're simply talking about commands. Well as you start to group commands, those groups are called macros. So we can have up to 64 commands within a macro and we have 256 macros available. So remember 64 commands per macro and we have 256 macros. Now that's a lot of power and if 64 commands aren't enough you can make the last command in a macro run another macro and chain them together in that way. Now you can see how powerful this can become because if this is line one of a macro we could have line two mute an input okay we can have line three change a cross point gain okay and we set that and now we can have a tremendous amount of control and power in that we can group all these commands and issue them out when we want to they can just live within these macros and when we need them we can simply call them they also live uh, within double EEPROM within the Aspen box so when you power cycle the box they don't go away but also uh, each macro is global so you can access them from any preset so from within any preset you happen to jump to if you call macro 7 it will be the same and that becomes very powerful when you want to do similar things across different presets okay Let's go on to the next section.